You know, active learning, many people think active learning is impossible in large classes. It's, it's not impossible, it's hard. And uh, because of all the students, it means that it's harder to control, which is, of course, one of the problems with active learning anyway, is you have to throw away control. I'm throwing it away now to 800 people, not just, you know, a couple. And so that makes it tough. But you can do it. You have to think about it more. You have to script it more, which is kind of weird. So I'm scripting active learning to make sure that uh, it's coming out the way that uh, I'd like it to go. My biggest barrier is class size. So again, I think that the, the way that that shows up most of the time is that th there's a lot of people who can uh, potentially derail the situation. You've got to keep it on target, keep it on um, track in order to get that done. The way to get that around, whether you're doing think, pair, share, or anything else, is to make sure you have more than one person taking care of this. So I'm, I'm posing questions at the front and trying to get that. I'll often have my TAs who are in class, by the way. I insist my TAs come to class. They can go around. They can make sure people are on task and um, make sure that we're getting to where we want to go. So you got to do that. I'd say monitoring is the biggest thing. Uh, recovering from the situation is also somewhat difficult sometimes, but you got to be able to bring them back. And then I think, um, and this is just not my class too, you got to you got to come down to why do we do this? What's you know what's in it for me? Is this going to be on the exam? Kind of thing. So somebody has to synthesize that, <clears throat> and that typically would fall to me. Um, people are put off by large classes because they think you can't do it. You can do it. You just have to think about it, work harder at it. But the payoff is incredible. So please do it.